What's up, people? Welcome or welcome back to InvestVT Claws. My name is Tevi, and this channel is dedicated to my investment journey, along with coverage on crypto, Tesla, Neo, Virgin Galactic, and ChargePoint. Come for the information and stay for the perspective. Well, I gotta say, it's nice to see some green on the screen after trending down for the past three weeks. All three indices closed higher. Neo did report its earning results on the 7th, and between the broader market bounce here in the US and some good news on inflation slowing in August out of China, Neo also managed a positive close to the week with a 1.97% gain after being relatively muted for most of the week. I'll get to Neo in just a moment, but before that, I've got to point out two pretty significant events taking place next week that will more than likely impact investor sentiment and determine if we keep moving higher in stocks and crypto or reverse lower. Now, those two events are the CPI number for inflation releasing on September 13th and the Ethereum merge is finally upon us. It will take place on September 15th and will transition Ethereum from the proof of work consensus to the proof of stake. I'll link a couple of articles below for what it means for the Ethereum networks as well as what it means for your Ethereum based NFTs. So if that's interesting to you, go read that. Now let's talk about NEO. In today's video, I'll go over some highlights from the earning call, then go over how analysts are viewing the stock post earning. We've got a breaking news story around NEO's autonomous driving progress, and I'll wrap up with my own takeaways on all this. As always, this isn't to be taken as financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. This is my personal approach to investing and the thought process behind it. I'd recommend watching all the way through so that you don't miss out on any pertinent information I'll be sharing. Drop this video a like if you haven't already and hit that subscribe button. Those are two easy ways to show your support to the channel and help it grow if you appreciate the content. All right, let's get into it. So to anyone who's been following NEO, you would already know that NEO's vehicle deliveries were slightly above expectations in Q2, which represents a year-over-year -year increase of 14.4%, but is down from Q1 2022, right? Now, earnings came in short of the consensus expectations with a loss of 20 cents versus the loss of 17 cents the forecasters were anticipating. Now, vehicle sales increased year over year and quarter over quarter with a 21% and 3.5% respectively. Total revenue, not surprisingly, followed suit with a year over year increase and a quarter over quarter increase of 21.8% and 3.9% respectively. However, NEO struggled on a year over year and quarter over quarter basis by posting a decrease in vehicle margin gross profit and gross margin, their CEO, William Lee, highlighted COVID-19, extreme weather conditions and supply chain uncertainties as headwinds they faced in Q2, in addition to the significant increase in battery costs. Put all together, that all resulted in the lower performance we saw with margin and profitability. During the call, we also received confirmation that the order book for the ET5 officially opened on September 9th, which is pretty cool, and the first deliveries are scheduled for the end of this month on the 30th. For their forward guidance, Neo stated that for deliveries, they expect 31,000 to 33,000 vehicles in Q3, and so far they delivered 20,729 vehicles cumulatively between July and August. So it's pretty likely that they'll meet their target here, assuming that they at least match their August performance, which I'm sure they will. All in all, the Q2 earning results was a mixed bag, but I would argue that given the challenges Neo faced, I think they're playing it smart by minimizing price increases and continuing to drive demand for their product, especially as they're launching and scaling three new models, right? The ET5, ET7, ES7, and entering new markets. Yes, the near-term hit on margin is an awesome to see, but it is a strategic trade-off. Let's not forget that NEO still has just over $8 billion in the bank to pursue their expansion, so I wouldn't worry about a couple of quarters of declining margin. Plus, judging by the market reactions to the earnings and the analyst consensus rating being reiterated as a strong buy, clearly I'm not the only one who shares that opinion. The current consensus average price target is slightly lower than the last time I covered it at $31.07, but because of the pullback we just had, this shakes out to imply a projected upside of 62.16%. More gains for those buying now, basically. The high-end forecast now is at $42, and the low end of the forecast remains unchanged at $25.80. Looking at the technical chart, the 50-day moving average has been acting as resistance for NEO ever since we dropped below the 200-day moving average back in November of last year at the market top. With that said, it's encouraging to see that NEO has successfully over the past three months broken past resistance a few times and is managing to stay near the 50 day overall. I do fully expect to see us continue to consolidate for a little while longer before making a decisive move to flip the 50 day from resistance to support. And from there, attack the 200 day moving average. If I was a betting man, which I kinda am, right? Cause I'm playing stocks. I'd say that Neil will flip the 200 day moving average into support by year end, mainly because I expect inflation picture and supply chain disruption to continue to ease. 
All right, moving on. If you recall, a few weeks back, William Lee was in California visiting the NEO US headquarters and scouting the location for the first NEO house. That, of course, came up during the earning call, with analysts wondering if there was more to the story. William chalked it up to, and I kind of paraphrase, I haven't been in the US since the pandemic, so it was time to visit. That's kind of what he gave for an explanation and basically downplayed it a bit and simply reiterated that the US is an important market that they'll eventually enter, and more than likely by mid-decade. Now, I think that makes sense. That said, what I found fascinating is the announcement that dropped post-earning call by Mobileye on Friday. If you didn't know, Mobileye is a software company focused on engineering autonomous driving technology. Fun fact, they were the ones behind the first generation autopilot system that Tesla used back in the day. And at that time, that system with lane keeping assist was ahead of anything anyone had on the market. It's also part of the reason why the Model S technology was so widely praised back in the day when it first came out. Now, unlike Tesla, Mobileye doesn't have its own vehicle lineup and instead is focused on creating software that can be licensed out to any auto manufacturer out there, right? Now, how this relates back to NEO is in 2019, NEO and Mobileye entered into a partnership to ultimately bring level four capability to NEO's lineup. In September of last year, we got a glimpse of the fruits of this partnership with the first ES8 RoboTaxi service demo. The goal being to launch a RoboTaxi service in Europe and Tel Aviv, that's in Israel, initially in 2022 at some point. Now, back to present day and the Friday announcement, Mobileye is officially starting level four testing in Detroit, Michigan, here in the US, with a fleet of over 50 ESA Neo SUVs. That's big, okay? Now, I'll link the full article below if you wanna go and read that, but this is something that has been in the works for quite some time. And I quote here, the company has worked closely with the US National Highways Traffic Safety Administration to ensure the safe operation of the vehicles on US roads, having a highly trained safety driver behind the wheel in Detroit's tasks. End of quote. And really, whatever learnings comes of this will likely continue to feed into improving the service in Europe and in Israel. Now, in case you're not familiar with the various level of autonomy, this graph here on the screen is a nice illustration. Most systems today are level two. Tesla is nearly at level three, though for legal reasons and because of the ongoing testing, they still classify themselves as level two. Level four then is really truly the giant leap forward that everyone is chasing after. Level four is the dream of sitting in your car, watching a movie, playing video games, taking naps, or even working on finalizing a presentation on your way to work while the car truly drives itself. Now, to say that this is big is an understatement. This is like big, big, okay? Tesla is already planning to be feature complete on level four capability by year end, and from the sound of it and the looks of it, Neo and Mobileye are not that far behind. The bottom line here is this, with every new report out on NEO, every article that drops, the fundamental picture keeps improving. I fully expect that the CPI number next week comes in lower than last month's number, and I expect that Papa Powell still hits the market with a 75 basis point rate height increase the following week to really drive home his point. And that point is that the Fed takes inflation seriously and they're not stopping until the job is done, right? That's exactly what he said. But you know what's cool about the stock market? Well, as much as there's always noise near term, the stock market is a discounting machine, right? For future earnings and long-term growth. As it stands, the market is already starting to recognize that NEO will deliver on that long-term growth promise. This means that more and more institutions and retail investors alike will continue to accumulate the stock. Said it before, but I'll say it again, if you wait for the financial media and fund managers to give you the all clear message, you'll for sure, and I mean for sure, miss out on most of the next move up. Do your own research, make a plan, and position yourself accordingly. My humble prediction here is that the NEO stock price moves significantly higher over the next six to 12 months, which is why I'm building my position today, because I'm definitely not missing out on that. But on that note, that's it for me today. Don't forget to drop this video a like if to help you gain a new perspective and share with others who you think could also benefit from it. For my newcomers, subscribe and don't forget to ring the notification bell so that you too can stay in the know. I'll be back on Sunday for my weekly video. Till then, you can keep up with me here on Twitter. Thank you for watching, stay humble, hustle hard, and I'll see you in the next one.